Hey everyone, it's Dice here and welcome back to a new video. So over the last few months these iceberg videos have popped up all over YouTube. I'm sure most of you have seen at least one of them. If not, here's a quick explanation. Basically you have this iceberg image with facts, easter eggs or general information about something and the deeper you go the more unknown or mysterious these things are. I'm actually quite late with this but I made one for Skate 3 so without further ado let's start with this list. Okay, these things at the very top are all known by pretty much everyone, but in case you don't know what they mean, here's a really quick rundown of them. Cheat codes. There are a few cheat codes in game which include hoverboard mode, mini skaters, zombie mode, Isaac to name the main ones. Secret characters. There are some secret characters you can play as in free play that are not in the actual story mode, for example Meat Man and Dan Bones. Colored grip tape. This is a glitch that was found out pretty much the month Skate 3 was released. Basically when you use a custom graphic on your board and make it really big, the texture will expand over the top of the board resulting in a colored grip tape. No legs glitch. If you import a friend skater that wears high socks and then wears shorts, your skater won't have any legs. This was a pretty popular glitch back in the day. Speed glitches. Basically glitches that let you go very fast, there are countless tutorials on YouTube. Dr. Pepper G. When Skate 3 came out in 2010, Dr. Pepper had codes on their bottles with that you would unlock Dr. Pepper themed items in the game. Movie references. There are many movie references in the game which are all hidden in the world in a parody like way. Alright, with that being done, let's move on to the more interesting things. Chan Center Airwalking. When you climb up this building at the Chan Center and align yourself like this and move forward, your skater will automatically walk in the air. However, this does not work when you jump, go the other way or try to get on your board. Judo. When you're in an online lobby, jump, get on your board and then do a very late judo. It can crash not only your game, but everyone's game in the whole lobby. But for some reason only people from specific areas are able to do it. And over the years it became a big meme in the Skate 3 community. <laughs> Killer beast, dude. I'm stuck! I gotta restart the game! <laughs> art Gallery Breakfast. When you go to this store on the Art Gallery DLC map, there's a sign which lists a rather strange breakfast. Nothing special, just a small funny easter egg. Albert invented trick lining. Everyone in the Skate 3 community knows X7 Albert. If you don't know him, just know that he is very disliked by almost the whole community and that there are several content cop and exposing videos about him. Now, one of the biggest play styles in Skate 3 is trick lining, and Albert just happens to be claiming that he invented it. Even though his team Rice Skating really made the playstyle popular, it's very debatable if he really came up with it. There was an old video of him coming up with the name trick lining, but many people stated that they called it trick lining a long time before. Hidden houses. When you go to the very bottom of the Skate 3 map, you can launch over this wall to find these hidden houses. However, you can't touch the ground around them or you will be teleported back. It's just a small cool hidden place and it kind of feels like an unfinished area. Magical tree. At the very top of the Skate 3 map, at this location, there's a very odd textured tree that basically looks like it's glowing. It's kind of like a community meme to call the magical tree, nothing really special. Skate 4D. Many years ago, when the whole community really wished for Skate 4 but had no hope of it ever being made, no other than X7 Albert set up a Kickstarter to make Skate 4 himself and call it Skate 4D. <laughs> As you might have guessed, it was bad. Like so bad that iDubs made a video about it. In the end the game was never really made and all but kept his money for himself. What a great guy. Coconut Cable. One more X7 Albert fact, he sold both the official Rise Skating and his original X7 Albert channel. The Rise Skating channel is now a dead TikTok hype channel, while his former X7 Albert channel is now called Coconut Cable with really weird clickbait videos. Now a big problem with this is first of all setting YouTube channels is not allowed by YouTube, so if they would find out X7 Albert would most likely get banned. But also the fact that the old Rai Skating channel has now deleted every single original video. Now these were videos not only made by X7 Albert, but in fact most made by the rest of the team. So basically the hard work of a whole team that made these videos over all these years is now forever gone. 
camera glitch. Basically, cameras in custom parks really slow down the frame rate if you play them in an online match. It's worse when you jump on them, which can almost freeze everyone's game who is in the lobby. <laughs> oh my goodness! Moving on. Missing texture glitch. There is a glitch which results in your skater not having a texture on the board or legs. It will then say missing texture all over the board or legs. I will link a tutorial for this in the description below. It's Kinda cool. After Dark Screams. In the After Dark DLC map, when you go very close to the asylum walls, you can hear several screams of inmates. It's basically a small creepy easter egg, nothing more. Skate 3 Shoe. In 2010, when Skate 3 just released, Adnis partnered up with EA to make a Skate 3 style Jameson 2 shoe. America did the same and released this Reynolds Cruiser Skate 3 shoe. Of course, both of these shoes can be found in-game and if you go through the Extras tab, there's also the option to put in an Adnis or America shoe code, but I couldn't really find any information on what this actually did. My best guess is that you could win these shoes in real life, but I'm not so sure about that. Don Hartley Don Hartley, or also known as Don Carver Hartley, is a skater and friend of the Skate 3 development team that died in October of 2009. When the developers of Skate 3 began forming the world of Skate 3, they paid respect by giving him an in-game memorial, as well as naming the main city and many areas after him. There's actually a whole video about this topic on the official Skate 3 channel, which is really interesting. Glowing Skaters After modding in Skate 3 began, people start to make really weird skaters. And the cool thing is that in Skate 3 you can import other people's skater. So if person 1 has modded the game to have a cool looking skater, Person 2 can import this mod skater without ever modding the game himself. This resulted in some really weird stuff, including glowing skaters. Skating coffins. Yeah, this one connects to the last topic. Basically, at the Memorial Plaza, there are these stone ledges, and many people don't know that these are actually something like a remake of the Holocaust Memorial, in which each stone represents something like a coffin or just one person in general. Now, after knowing this, skating these stone ledges seems a bit weird, doesn't it? Flying trash can. If you teleport to this location and then reset all the objects, a trash can will fly at you with incredible speed. Basically, this object spawns a bit underneath the map and whenever it spawned there, it glitches out and shoots in this direction. You can definitely have some fun with it, so check it out the next time you're there. Crying baby. Now this one is a bit weirder. There are many houses in Skate 3 which have no real use, but for some reason if you go very close to this exact one, you can hear a baby cry. So why would the developers put a crying baby sound effect here that you could only hear if you stand very close to the house and have your audio turned up very high. Till this day, no one has found out, but it's a bit creepy for sure. Okay, now we get to the more interesting stuff. Demo items. Back in the day, there was a small demo of Skate 3. In this demo, you can play a part of the map for 20 minutes and do some challenges. When the time runs out, you have then the option to recommend this game to one of your friends. If you then buy a real game, you would unlock a few items that could not be unlocked otherwise. This was something almost no one knew about a few years ago, because it just got totally forgotten about. Hidden Basketball Court On the Art Gallery DLC map, there is a basketball court flying outside of the map. You can actually reach it using a launch glitch, but it's pretty hard, believe me, it took me at least 30 minutes to get there. And the ground of the court is actually solid, so you can skate here in the nothingness, which actually looks kinda cool. Tony Hawk in camera. This is an easter egg that was found in 2018, 8 years after the game was released. Basically, if you place down a camera in the park editor and look on the screen, you can see a very blurry image, which is actually the cover image of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. So this easter egg is just a super cool way to pay respect to the biggest skateboarding legend of all time. Golden Bunny 
If you go onto the exit of the spillway tunnel and look into the distance, you can actually see what appears to be a golden bunny. After some time, people found out that it's actually just two cranes, which happen to look like this. Even though this easter egg has been debunked, it's still a fun little thing to show to someone who has never seen it before. Kush Pops in Skate 3 The Kush Pop is a famous Skate 2 glitch in which you bounce off any ledge which lets you do some pretty cool gaps. This sadly was patched in Skate 3, but after a really long time someone found out that it is actually still possible to do them. You just have to do them on a ledge of a height that you could not normally land, so for an example on a skyscraper. Concept art. There's a lot of concept art for Skate 3 out there, so much indeed that I actually made a whole video showing off every single one and comparing the early sketches to the actual game later on. This video will also be linked in the description. Character edit location. When you go to edit your skater, there's always this concrete wall behind you. Well, turns out that this is actually a real location in game. It's located outside the skate school and you can get there with a launch glitch. It's pretty cool to check out, but trust me when I say that it's really, really hard to get there. Pre-order boards. Before the skate games came out, you always had the chance to pre-order them in a special package that would include a real EA skate deck. These are super rare, as there are only a specific number made of each one. Now that the games are sold out, it's really hard to find any of them. And if you're lucky enough to find one, it's most likely for a very high price. If you want a closer look, the mad lad Toasty Ghost happens to own almost every single one of them. 420. Yeah, this is a pretty weird one again. Basically, the number 420 comes up a lot in this game. Like, a lot. Every clock is set to 420, many watches are set to 420, and most of the game dates are set to 20th of April. So yeah, I don't think I have to explain any further. Danny Way Ramp Shape In the Danny Way Hawaiian Dream DLC is a secret mega ramp on top of a hill. Now, if you look at it from the top, you can clearly see that it has a kinda odd shape. We are now starting to get into the weirder stuff. Skate 3 cover location. Compared to Skate 1 and 2, the Skate 3 cover really stands out as the only one to feature the actual game world. Or does it? Well, if you take a closer look at the cover, you notice that this whole location isn't actually in the game, as well as the characters, boards and clothes. Even weirder is the symbol, which can be found as a sticker here, on this man's t-shirt and on this guy's hoodie. Now, this symbol is never seen anywhere else in the game. So our best guess is that it was supposed to be a team logo in the game that got scrapped. Now for the location, it's really interesting. Why would the developers make an extra location for the cover and then delete it afterwards? It must have been very early in the development though. If you take a look at this building, you can see that the texture actually is not placed correctly on the building. Carnival DLC When looking up old alpha screenshots of the game, you can find one showing the DLC tab. Here you can see DLCs that made it into the game as well as some free slots for potential new DLCs. The interesting thing is that for once there is a Diodex Street League DLC, so it's pretty safe to say that the developers planned on including a Street League. DLC but had to scrap it from the game for unknown reasons. But even more interesting is the Carnival DLC. What was this supposed to be? A model of the Skate 3 community actually looked through the game files and found this name still in the game so it seems to not have been just a placeholder but a real DLC that was planned to be in the game. Since there is no other information about this, we sadly might never know what the Carnival DLC was supposed to be. PAX Price Board In 2010, Blackbox Studios presented Skate 3 at PAX East. While showing the game and letting people try it out, they also hold a contest in which you could win a Skate 3 PAX East board. In an interview with Roster Teef, they even mentioned that they handed out around 200 boards. These were the two different boards you could win and now they are super rare. As you can see, people want up to $230 for a used board and they still sell. Something that is really 
interesting to me is that Redditor Rufi Martini posted a picture of this prize board and as you can see it's still wrapped in plastic so you can imagine how much that is worth now. Trick guide location. Earlier in the video I mentioned how you can go to the edit skater location. Now as you might know there is a trick guide in which you can see every trick performed in this location. So people start to wonder if the edit skater location is a real place you can go to. Doesn't that mean that the trick guide location should be somewhere on this map as well? Well, maybe. Till this day no one has found the location of it, so it stays a mystery. Skate 4 star. You might have heard of these organizations where you can buy and name a star, right? Well, what if I told you that some people of the Skate 3 community bought a star just to name it Skate 4? On May 11, 2020, on Skate 3's 10th anniversary, fellow YouTuber Cyphers collected money from a few people and bought an extra bright star and named it Skate 4. And I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but isn't it interesting that for 10 years EA didn't want to make Skate 4 and the developer studio black box closed and just as we buy and name a star skate 4 suddenly they announce that they are making it i mean okay now here comes the really deep stuff beast man in the introduction scene of skate 3 you can see two hunters catch a bigfoot like creature called beast man beast man is played by chris haslam and it's just like a small joke they put in but over the years some people joke that they actually saw beast man in the woods in the game no i personally don't think this is true i've been playing this game for the past 10 years and i've never seen anything looking close to beast man in game and i just think that it's very unlikely that this is real or is it? You can get to the boat. At the very edge of the industrial map you can see a few boats in the distance with one being a bit closer than the other ones. Many players, myself included, wondered over the time if there's actually a way to get to the boat. The problem is when you try to launch glitch to it your screen will turn black. Milky Bucket had a theory how you could use a barrier glitch to get to it but the game will reset you when you are far enough away from the map so as of now it's seems to be impossible, maybe we will get there one day. Suicidal people. For some reason, very rarely people can spawn on buildings and will walk just straight off. I myself have encountered this a few times and although this is most likely just a glitch, it's still very weird. Normally there are always a few people walking around the map and when you skate in one specific area, more people will spawn around you. But how is it possible that sometimes there are several people on a random building? Yeah, this is a really weird bug. Skate 2 Remaster As most of you should know, over the last few years we got a Skate 3 as well as a Skate 1 Remaster for Xbox One. But never a Skate 2 Remaster. So why would Xbox bring out a Skate 1 and a Skate 3 Remaster but not a Skate 2 one? This really got many people confused, especially since many people consider Skate 2 to be the best one of the series. But no matter how much we asked to finally get a remaster, it just wouldn't happen and they could not give any information why. But there's a theory that actually makes a lot of sense. Basically for Xbox to release Skate 2 as a remastered version, they would need the rights to use the songs that are in the game. However, only Blackbox had these rights a long time ago and by now the contract most likely ran out. So in order to make a Skate 2 remaster, they would need to renew the use of every single song that is used in Skate 2. If you take a look at the Tony Hawk remaster that came out last year, it was the same exact problem but in that case they were able to cut these songs out of the game. Art gallery map is unfinished. If you ever played on the art gallery DLC map you most likely know how easy it is to go out of bounds. Like in this area you literally just have to work around this building. And jumping over the fence isn't hard either. So this combined with the fact that there is a really big area out of bounds definitely raises some questions. If they really planned on just releasing this part of the map then why did they model this whole area outside of the map? No, some people have suggested that they just used the original skate map file as base 
but the weird thing is that some textures have been changed, so there definitely was a plan to have this out of bounds area to be included in the DLC map. The most likely answer in my opinion is that they just ran out of time to finish this map and were pressured to release it as early as possible, so they just put a bunch of fences around the map and called it a day. Gnarly pops make you faster. This is a huge debate in the Skate 3 community. Some people say that popping gnarlies at a high speed actually increases the speed, some say that it just keeps your speed and some say that it actually doesn't make a difference. I try to find find an answer to this and it's pretty hard to tell, but I think it's most likely that you can just keep your speed with nollipops, even though other tricks would have the same result. I made a little comparison right here and you can see that nollipops kinda is the fastest one, so I don't really know. What are your thoughts about this? You are dead in Skate 3. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever feel like the Skate 3 world was really different to the first two games? Now what if I told you that there is a theory that you are actually dead in Skate 3? You might say that this makes no sense, but let me list you some things. First of all, at the very beginning of the game you have a huge fall. like. That's not just a bail. If you look at the speed and the height your skater crashes into the ground, it's most likely that he didn't survive it. Then after you wake up, Redder comes to you and just randomly starts to talk about creating a team. It's all very blurry and a bit hard to understand. Right in this moment, your skater actually dies. And the rest of the game is basically how you are in heaven, skating in a skateboarding paradise. All your friends are there, no one bothers you, even the security skates. Seems a bit odd, doesn't it? Also, random objects just spawn out of the sky if you want them. At the skate school, you can literally fly in the air. Now, this still might not really convince you, but there's more. Ever thought why you don't really see Slappy in Skate 3? In the end of Skate 2, he actually talks about leaving the city because he seems to have a child in Brazil. So, why in Skate 3? Is he not in Brazil and even has a car selling company but still never shows up? Maybe this is your skater imagining how you and Slappy meet again and Slappy finds himself a happy end by owning his own company. Still not enough? Okay, then let's get to the biggest point. In Skate 2, at the very first death race, they actually take a moment of silence for Fabio because he apparently died in a death race. So when he is dead in Skate 2, why is he in Skate 3? All in all, I wouldn't take this too serious, but it's a fun theory nonetheless. Alright, that concludes my iceberg analysis video. This took way too long to make, but I hope it was still very interesting and enjoyable for you to watch. If you liked this video, definitely share it and hit the thumbs up button. It really helps my channel out a lot. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more Skate 3 content in the future. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Bye!